I'm here in Israel shooting on our outdoor patio. Now, if you're coming to Israel to walk in the footsteps of Jesus, one of the things you're most definitely going to be doing is visiting the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. It's supposedly the site where Jesus was crucified, buried, and rose again. But there's also a competing site on the other side of the city called Gordon's Tomb or the Garden Tomb. It also claims to be the place where Jesus was crucified and buried and rose again. So, which one is it? Well, let's take a little walking tour through both of them, talk about each, and then see if we can't come to a conclusion. We're going to start off at the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. This is the oldest church claiming this. Uh, and it's actually not even one church. It's actually six different religious groups and denominations that own and control different parts of it. You've got the Catholic Church, the Greek Orthodox Church, the Coptic Church, the Armenian Church, and they're working together, but they're also oftentimes fighting together over who's running this. But the claims go way back. In fact, there is actually even a chapel at the Church of the Holy Sepulchre that dates back to Constantine's mother in the mid-300s, when after Constantine became a Christian, she came and visited and supposedly even found the True Cross at a location that is now part of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. So this marks the place where Constantine's mother, Helena, supposedly found the fragments of the cross. Um, now, whether it's the real cross, that's probably doubtful, but this is where they honor it. Um, and there's ancient frescoes here. If you look up at the very ceiling, there's actually an anchor up there, which is an ancient symbol of Christianity. You've got remnants along this of ancient frescoes that you can't even see what they were. But the claims for it also go back within a couple hundred years, but it doesn't look like it now. So here is a little bit of a walkthrough of Golgotha, the place that they claim Jesus was crucified, and the tomb where he was buried and raised again, and what it looks like. Just to the right of the entrance is these steep steps. This is the way up to Golgotha. And you definitely want to be careful. Low archways, steep steps, easy trip and fall. But this, you can see how worn these steps are from literally over a thousand years. And then to the right, and this is where Golgotha was. And look at all the ornamentation, the braziers. Here. That's where the sun was. So you can shine the touch where that cross was. And this is Golgotha. You can see the rocks through the display case. The amazing artwork in the ceilings. And then from there, we will go past the lectern and we'll head to the tomb. Um, it's incredible that some of those important elements of Christianity and then the whole room back there. So Golgotha is up there. And you can see underneath it here. But that is only the beginning of this incredible structure. So now that you've seen that, well now we will 
see the anointing stone again. Now we're going to head this way and continue on. <laughs> this is the tomb. So, I know you're looking and go, well, wait, isn't the tomb inside a cave with the stone rolled away? Well, they literally cut the whole thing away to build this. And then it's inside this huge vegetable. But that marks the place where they believe this buried. Now, this is something I didn't get to do last time. We didn't get to go inside because the lines are crazy. Inside itself. Look at all of this. I think this is a slab they laid them on. So that's a little bit of a look at the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Now keep in mind, this is 2,000 years of churches worshiping there, burning incense, decorating, people praying. So it has changed quite a bit. Now, of course, this doesn't look like it did 2,000 years ago, where they claim Jesus was buried, the slab, is actually inside a stone church that was part of the tomb and the whole mountain around it has actually been cut away to build the stone church over the slab. And so it looks nothing like it did back then. But is it the right place? Now, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, of course, is in the modern day boundaries of Jerusalem. And back in the 1800s, a man named Gordon looked at that and went, now, wait a minute. The Jews don't bury their dead within the city limits. They don't cruise. The Romans didn't crucify people within the city limits. And the Church of the Holy Sepulchre is within the city. So therefore, it can't be it because those don't match. And in looking around, he found another place that is actually on the other side of the city outside. There's a garden there. There is a mountain right by the old road that went out of the city that looked a little bit like a skull. And it had a tomb, a possible tomb. So here's a look at the garden tomb that could be another potential site. I, I read also more about this place. This goes uh, in archaeological terms more back to the time of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Like 200 years after Jesus, 
they found a drawing of a boat with people in, and people had to keep themselves secret mm. in that time as believers. So they wrote, we were here. Mm. And it could be that there has been, have been believers over there in that time that worshiped Jesus because he rose from the dead. Mm. Archaeologically, we are not 100% sure in this place and also not in the other place. Why? Because Jerusalem has been destroyed different times. So mm -hmm. it's very, you have to dig very deep to find proofs uh, of, the, of the reality. Uh, later on, after uh, Helena, the mother of Constantine, discovered this place, after 1700 years, people became interested in this area. Mm -hmm. And you can see the channel that goes down in the middle and all the juice would run down that channel into this uh, reservoir, which yeah, was plastered. bigger than the picture made of <laughs> Yeah. And they would use young ladies not to hurt the grapes and, and the wine to tread out the grapes. It's in the tomb at your right side. Jesus Christus, Alpha and Omega. Jesus, mm -hmm. the beginning and the end. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, when I was 24, I didn't want to believe that anymore. I turned my back to uh, believing because uh, I had a few uh, difficult experiences uh, as in a broken background of uh, my family. But then uh, a very nice lady, a believer from a traditional church, rented a room to me. And she told me, she saw that I had a difficult time, she said, I had such a wonderful experience. She said, I was in my room, I was very sick, I was dying, and suddenly Jesus appeared to me, and I was healed. And then I opened my heart to the Lord. I said, Lord, I cannot do it anymore. He really said those words, please come and help me. And he has been always faithful. And he wants to be also faithful to you. Yeah, very good. Now this is not totally a, 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 a right picture of the tomb. We have another one of an uh, archaeologist. Jesus Christus Alpha and Omega. That's the place then where probably Jesus had been laid. One of the wonderful things with the tombs, you can hear people singing. Mm. And there is the Arabic called a prayer. No, there's still people in there. Yeah. So what you see behind me is the garden tomb. It's one of two possible locations where Jesus uh, was buried. Uh, there's a place over here called Golgotha, which the stones look like a skull that he could have died. Uh, but evidence is either way, but even so, so close. So close to where Jesus died, was buried, and raised again. And the gardens around here are just beautiful. And you can see the gardens. You can see what it looks like. You can get a feel for what it looked like back at the time Jesus died. Now, they're having to do some reconstruction work on the skull right now because part of it has collapsed. And they're trying to essentially rebuild it so you can see what it used to look like. It looks like it fits the description versus the Holy Sepulchre that looks nothing like the descriptions. So, which is the real one? Well, here's some things to consider. One, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, that site at the time that Jesus was crucified, actually was not in the city limits at that time. It was outside, and it was on a main road that left the city at the time. So, site-wise, uh, the couple criticisms, it could be it. The thing that's hard with the Church of the Holy Sepulchre is that you can't see 
the skull. You can't see what it would have looked like because they've built so many churches and chapels and just really transformed the whole area so it looks nothing like it would have back then. Whereas the garden tomb looks exactly like it could have looked. But the traditions that go back actually go back uh, recorded to within about a hundred years of when Jesus died. Close enough that there would have been people alive still who had been there and could have refuted it. It it comes pretty close. So when it comes down to it, there's a very high likelihood that the Church of the Holy Sepulchre actually is the place where Jesus was crucified. Uh, there's a very good chance it is the place where he was buried. There's first century tombs there that I show you in the video that are uh, attributed to Joseph of Arimathea, who wouldn't have used the same tomb that Jesus did, but he still would have wanted to be buried nearby. There are other tombs there, so we know that there was a graveyard, a, a burial place. We know that it was on the road. We know it was outside the city. So the Church of the Holy Sepulchre probably is the actual location. But if you want to know what it actually was like and get a feel for having been there, then you want to go to the garden too. So I guess the long answer would be you really need both. The physical location, but then to be able to take the presence and the atmosphere and the visuals of the garden tomb. And then when you experience the garden tomb, you can then kind of overlay it over the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, and you get a much fuller picture of the actual death of Jesus, the crucifixion, the burial, the resurrection. Between the two, you'll have the sight and the experience, and they go together. And build a full picture. So if you're in Israel, my recommendation, go to both. It will let you fully experience it. And I, I think it will give you the best possible visit and experience. Hope you enjoyed this look at both. I hope it helps make what Jesus did for you real. That it comes to life. That you can actually picture that. That you can imagine what it might have been like that day 2,000 years ago when he suffered and died for our sins, when he paid the price and did the work that none of us could do, just because he loved us. Thanks so much for watching. God bless.